No, for the world, the perception of libertarians changes fundamentally if they see a guy who declares himself to be an anarcho-capitalist, a libertarian, is supporting the United States in all of its wars and troubles that it causes all over the world and supports a guy like uh, Netanyahu, who is at least in the current scene the biggest mass murderer that runs around. That will ruin the reputation of libertarianism the world around. So we should make it perfectly clear that we distance ourselves from this type of policy. Whatever he does in Argentina might be better than what other people before him did. But this sort of thing is an unforgivable mistake that he made. Now I know that there is some disagreement on this. And I know that the main disagreement will come from Philip. Philip, <laughs> you. Yeah, thank you, Hans. Uh, the points are well well taken. Um, let me give you a disclaimer first. I know, I know Millet uh, personally. I consider him a friend. Um, I met him first in person 2021 when we had lunch together. And you know this feeling that you have here also, that uh, yeah, the, the other person is, uh, has read Hopper, Rothbard, Mises, is an anarcho-capitalist, sees the state as the, ult as, as the ultimate enemy, and the taxes are theft and so on. So I got immediately the impression that he was one of us, to say, say it this way. Um, and the conversation was as friendly as is with anyone would, would be here. That is the first time I, I met them. And uh, so, so I trust that he is an anarcho-capitalist, not only self-proclaimed, but he, but he really is. Um, he has the best intentions. I think, um, Well, there the, are the, the, the different, different things I would like to, to point out about what uh, Hans said. Um, there are, of course, always the problem of corruption. Actually, the first time I met him, I asked him, don't you fear that when you go into politics, you will be corrupted and get away from the principles? Yeah. So I asked him that because I think this is the, the biggest danger that uh, could, could happen. I think that he does a really great job in spreading the ideas of liberty. So I don't think it goes into one ear and out of the other, and I don't think it's only misery that uh, brought him to power. He started in 2014 or 15 going to television and become very quickly a star. Uh, in 2018, he was already one of the 100 most uh, famous um, people in Argentina, and he was with, with a large difference, the uh, economist who got most air time in television. And during all these years, he has done what he calls uh, Batalla Cultural, which is spreading the ideas, to spread the ideas to, of liberty to, to the population. And I think there has been a change in mentality in Argentina. Yeah, while the Jews, especially the Jews, they, the young people, they were, of course, before they were all very leftist. And now in, he got most votes about the, uh, with the young people. And these people actually buy Austrian books. Like uh, the, in, in Spanish, the books of Union Editorial, which is the main publishing house of Austrian books, they are sold out all, all the time. So there's a huge movement. Um, building in, in Argentina a libertarian movement and they are reading your books, they are reading Rothbard's books, they are reading Mises, Huerta de Soto, and they are very well educated in libertarian ideas. They are 14-year-old people who, who uh, by memory recite the definition of liberalism that uh, Millet gives um, because he repeats it all over again. And they, and they read this. And now he gets the platform in Davos and at other places. And it, I, think, I don't think it's about the elites. They, they, they don't care. 
But this platform now is a global platform for libertarian ideas. And he always cites, also in these speeches, which have, have a global impact, uh, the li libertarian authors, yeah? Mises, Hayek, uh, Rothbard, Walter de Soto, uh, um, Alberto Benegas Lynch. So I think uh, a libertarian politician, which at the end is a politician, um, one should measure him first, or what he should do is to spread the ideas in the most poor form. He should have very clear the idea where to go. And I think he has it clear. And he defends it. Also after he was elected, he still calls uh, the state a parasite or politicians parasites. So this is one thing to have, uh, in theory, the idea is clear, the, to have the ideas, the ideal is anarcho-capitalism and it's there. And then in practice, of course, you have to make compromises. I mean, Millet is unfortunately, oh, <laughs> he's not a dictator who can do anything he wants. He has no majority in parliament, nor in the Senate. He has only 15% in the parliament. Yes. So he needed allies. Uh, and, and there he took, of course, uh, people that also know how the machine of the state works, that were ministers before, like Caputo or Sturz, uh, Sturzenegger, who was the head of the central bank before. And um, he, he needed, or he needs their support, at least until the next election, of the par uh, parliament next year uh, to get things done. Otherwise, he, he cannot get uh, anything, anything done. He, so, so he is one anarcho-capitalist, but the people he, he works with and he needs their support, they are maybe monetarist or Chicago school people, um, and he tries to push them in, in the right direction. I think everything he did, or <laughs> is in the right direction, and this is an important thing. One, ha one can criticize him for not doing enough and not doing it fast enough, and this is very well taken, and one should push him to do things faster. And it's, of course, very difficult to know how fast can someone go without uh, leaving the support, uh, 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 losing the support. Does he have to dance in the street? With yeah, yeah, well, I, I can't, I, well, I can't. <laughs> Let, let me go through the three uh, parts. So internal th stuff, he cut real government spending by, by there are several estimates, by the, the highest is 35%. So he got rid of, totally rid of the inflation tax, which was, there, there was a deficit of 5% in, of, 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 uh, of the government and 10% as a central bank because the central bank was also indebting itself, so 15% was financed by printing new money last year, and he got it down to, until July to zero. At the same time, yes, he raised some taxes, uh, like the import tax, as you pointed out, but the net effect is that a huge reduction of taxes, which you can see uh, the burden of the government on the shoulders of the people has fallen because the real government spending has fallen uh, 35%. And about the central bank and the repudiation of debt, I mean, I, I, I'm very favorable to that. And I actually asked him why he, uh, why he would not have done that. Like, uh, uh, I mean, if you close the central bank, you have also the problem that the central bank has issued the debts to the banks that the banks bought, so you would have the collapse of the banking system as well, something I'm favorable to as well. But uh, he said that if I would have done that, there would have been hyperflation, of course, um, and I would have been out of office in three days. So he has not only has to work with people which are not libertarians, but he has also the opposition who wants everything, the left wants everything to, to make every, does everything that he has isn't successful, because if he is successful, the left will not go back to power in Argentina anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. And in the rest of the world, it would be also an example that libertarian ideas work and therefore the left all over the world wants him to fail urgently. So they will steer social unrest and a coup whenever it's possible. And if there's a hyperinflation, they will certainly they will certainly do it and maybe be successful. And then the Kirchnerists come back into power 
and uh, it will be a total misery for for Argentina. And this is also the reason for the IMF that um, if the IMF does not renew the debt next year, um, there will be default in Argentina, in Argentina and possibly hyperinflation. So, and there might be maybe social unrest and he may get lose power. Um, but there would be no hyperinflation if he just simply stops repaying the debt. That has nothing to do with hyperinflation. Well, then the whole banking it. system can go, could go uh, bankrupt, and then why would you have uh, faith in the peso anymore? They, they, they would switch maybe to the dollar and then stop using the peso, and the peso would use, lose its, yeah, its the value. Yeah, the peso would disappear. That's good. Yeah, yeah, that's good, but it would uh, hyperinflation in terms of pesos, so the peso would become worthless. Yeah. Uh, no, then people go use dollars instead of pesos. Peso dies out, and they use dollars. Then they are only dependent on on on, on the dollar inflation, and that can be uh, uh, accommodated by also allowing euro payment of taxes or gold payment in, in Texas. So there would be no hyperinflation. They would just use dollars. That's it. Yeah, the, the question is if you could do that without uh, having social unrest that would le lead to a loose of support of people which he, which he, he needs. Did not, he did not make an attempt to close the central bank as he promised he would. He did, that, he, he might have had uh, might have needed the uh, um, agreement from Parliament, but he didn't even try. He didn't even say, look, I'm proposing that we close the central bank and there will be no more pesos printed from to this day on. He could have said that. He yeah. didn't say it. You know, I, I tell you what, what his plan was. His pla plan was initially to take the assets of the central bank uh, which uh, go, uh, Argentinian government bonds, switch them into dollars, and then exchange the monetary base of pesos into into dollars. When he assumed power, he looked at the, oh, he looked at the central bank's balance sheet and found out there are not enough uh, enough assets to turn into dollars. The central bank has issued even remunerated liabilities that. Uh, lead to an internal um, need to produce more pesos because the central bank issued basically short-term liabilities at an interest rate of more than 100 percent and they issued pesos to to pay this this interest so he said i first want to um, clean up the central bank's balance sheet all these problems i want to s uh, solve first and then he's, he still wants to get rid of the central bank uh, not immediately, because I asked him, do you still want to get rid of it? And he says, yes. I'm also occupied, preoccupied that it takes, I'm worried that it takes so long. And of course, this president of the central bank, who is, uh, who is a monetarist, he doesn't want to close the central bank. That's, that's, that's very clear. But I still think that he wants to do so. And he says always that once the inflation rate uh, comes comes down to zero, then he will open also the exchange rate, yeah, and then the time will come to get rid of the central bank. <laughs> that's, that's, that sounds a little bit like the announcement that you have from the Turkish central bank. By, by, by 2029, they get the inflation rate down to the point where they want to have it. And his, his plan is also, whenever the inflation rate is down, but he has already projections in 2026 it should be that, in 2027 it should be that. And that, of course, instills great trust in the public uh, about the solidity of the, central, of the central bank. These types of promises are always delivered by central banks. That's what they are there for. They lie about what they do with money. That's it. And I, I totally agree that we have to push Millet to do it as fast as possible. And I also, I, I totally agree with you with that. Should be, but I think he's going to, into the right direction. It could, could be done faster, of course. Yeah, I think these are 
as you can imagine, I think it's a tactical concession. It's also the military. He, he has the minister of the military is from the pro party, which he needs for support. His uh, vice president is a daughter of a high military rank officers, and he got uh, important votes to win the election from this, uh, from this part of the population. So if he uh, he gets the support of, of, of the military, which is very important, as you said, in South, South, South America. So, um, um, as I said, I had the same doubts as, as, as you had, Alessandro. Is, is he just lying or not? And, and I tried to find out when I met him the first time. And I came to the personal conclusion that I might be wrong. That it's the se second case. It's a, it's a unique case. But uh, I may be wrong, but I, I think one should... Uh, one can and should criticize him where he does stuff uh, that go in the wrong direction or that's not fast enough. And I think in the, and I agree, of course, in the external policy, it's the most glaring, even though I don't think the practical implications of this are very important. Um, that he pays lip service to say, yeah, I support the West against Russia and the, these people. Um, I don't think this is practical important implications for Argentina because Argentina is uh, on the global perspective of military wars and so it's uh, non-existent or it's uh, irrelevant totally irrelevant so um, so I don't think that is uh, th that is crucial th this question but I agree that it would be better to be neutral even though I think it could be uh, so so in South America, the option is or you are with the BRICS, or with Russia, China, Iran, or you're with the United States. I don't see it so clearly as you that there's strictly an option to be neutral, especially if there's blackmailing by the IMF or, and so on. Yeah. No, that I cannot quite agree with here. As far as foreign policy is concerned, he was completely free. Uh, he could say whatever he wanted, and he could stay, take an a neutral stand and he did side with gangsters all around the world that was a big mistake and that will ruin the reputation of libertarianism all over the all, all over South America they will just say the same things that they said oh Friedman was a guy who advised Pinochet and because of that these libertarians are evil people he pursues now the same the same policy needing the support of the military is one thing, but assigning the military also to do domestic things, police tasks, is something entirely different that did not exist before under any other regime. So, no, foreign policy is very important, and you cannot say, oh, this is for internal affairs in Argentina that doesn't matter much and nobody in the world uh, cares much about it. foreign policy that Argentina pursues. No, for the world, the perception of libertarians changes fundamentally if they see a guy who declares himself to be an anarcho-capitalist, a libertarian, is supporting the United States in all of its wars and troubles that it causes all over the world, and supports a guy like uh, Netanyahu, who is, at least in the current scene, the biggest mass murderer that runs around. That will ruin the reputation of libertarianism the world around. So we should make it perfectly clear that we distance ourselves from this type of policy. Whatever he does in Argentina might be better than what other people before him did. But this sort of thing is an unforgivable mistake that he made. And with that, I declare that over. <laughs>